as I've said, I'm going to go through a little bit about um, studying during the pandemic, and then I'm going to talk about university life during a pandemic. Um, my colleague Chloe is here in the chat, and um, so if you are having any technical difficulties, or if you have something that you need to ask immediately while I'm presenting, then um, you can speak to her through the chat function. Otherwise, um, then we'll have our student ambassador Q&A at the end of my presentation, so for the majority of this session. So let's start out with studying, so the academic part of um, going to university during a pandemic. So obviously I kind of give you a little bit of a disclaimer here. Um, I can only really give you the information about what it's been like at Royal Holloway. And um, that's because that's where I work, that's where um, this webinar is coming from and that's what I know best. Um, but I can kind of probably reassure you that most universities across the UK are doing quite a similar approach to us. Um, some may have had uh, slightly different kind of uh, restrictions or, or slightly different um, ways of handling. Uh, their academic sessions, um, but this is what we've been doing at Royal Holloway in case you're interested in what our students have been up to. So of course it all started in March 2020 um, with the, um, I would say, unexpected closure of universities um, due to the restrictions imposed by the government. Um, so at that point we were, we were kind of um, not prepared uh, for this type of thing. Uh, we weren't anticipating it, of course. So um, students in the academic year 2019-2020 um, kind of had to finish out their year um, in a very different way than they were expecting. Um, so all classes moved online and um, all assessments and exams were um, kind of converted to online uh, versions as well. So um, that's kind of how the situation was at the end of last academic year. And then um, in September 2020, we started a new academic year with a new cohort of students, so new freshers came in. Um, and this year started with a blended learning approach. Um, that um, We're kind of going to explain what that means later, um, but we also had an option for some courses and um, some uh, postgraduate courses and some undergraduate courses as well. Um, students could delay their starts until January 2021. Um, this may have particularly been useful for international students who didn't know whether or not they would be able to um, enter the country in September. Um, so they thought it might have been easier to kind of delay their start date until January 2021. So that's kind of where we were at the beginning of this academic year. And then, of course, um, things changed uh, quite dramatically in the end of 2020 and the start of 2021 in terms of the coronavirus situation in this country. Um, restrictions changed uh, again and um, the government uh, kind of ruled out any face-to-face -face teaching, which meant that the blended learning approach that we originally started the academic year with um, had to stop. And so that, at that point, everything went purely online again. Um, and as of the current situation now, um, students are now allowed face-to-face -face teaching. Um, so while there were limited face-to-face -face teachings um, that were allowed between January and May, this was for very specific practical courses. Um, and most of those weren't included, uh, most of the courses at Royal Hollow weren't included in that list, which was written by the government. Um, however, now students are allowed face-to-face -face teaching, although it's actually the end of our um, term here, and it's coming up to the exam term, which means students would not have ordinarily been in, to, in teaching anyway at this time of year. Um, so it's been a little bit of a strange way to kind of um, finish out this academic year, but it was a very strange academic year in the first place. A little bit more of an explanation of what we mean when we say blended learning. Um, so you may have come across this term before. Um, again, quite several universities in the country have been using this. Um, so this is kind of one understanding of it. So some of your time while you were um, in that time between September and January when, you, when we were doing blended learning, some of your teaching would have been face to face. So that were things like seminars, workshops and labs. Um, if you were studying a science or something like engineering where you needed physical equipment in order to um, do your lesson, um, you were going to actually be physically in person for that. Um, however, there was also the opportunity to take these particular classes in a, in a virtual way. So for example, if you were told that you had to self isolate, um, and, and therefore could not come onto campus on a particular week, and then you were able to kind of uh, video call in to your seminar or your workshop um, and make sure that you still got the learning even if you weren't physically allowed to be there. Uh, now these were kind of uh, smaller class sizes, so those that were um, not the size of lectures, but usually with a limit of about 30 students per class. 
and these are placed in bigger rooms so that we could allow for social distancing. And then there were the online uh, component of blended learning was mostly lectures. So in normal life, you might have a lecture theatre that seats 300 students and it might be full uh, for your particular lecture that you go, let's say, every week on a Thursday afternoon. Um, however, in this case, because of the restrictions, that was something that was, um, you know, particular risk with a huge amount of students uh, crammed into one space and no social distancing wasn't possible. And so these types of um situations these types of lessons were all moved online um, and so that's kind of where the blended learning approach leaves us so you have some face-to-face -face teaching as well as some online teaching and that's really um how it panned out some pictures of our campus in case you're kind of curious of what it looked like for our students and um, when they were coming back in september 2020 and um, so we had lots of hand sanitizing points and some social distancing markers as well um, here's some examples of some social distancing markers in lecture theatres. Um, so again, you wouldn't be actually using these to have lectures, instead you'd be using these for workshops or seminars. So there would probably be maximum 30 students in one of these rooms, um, but normally seats about you know, 80 or 100, which is why you know, there's lots of um, cut off seats for social distancing. And same again here in the, in the lecture theatre, you can see that there would be markers for social distancing. In terms of uh, kind of other things that students uh, were following uh, during the blended learning approach, uh, face coverings, students and staff um, are still currently required to wear face coverings um, indoors and in places where you're not able to maintain social distancing unless you have a reasonable exemption. Um, something that I didn't add on the slides here because it is uh, relatively new um, for students that are returning to campus is testing. Uh, we have a testing program um, where students and staff are all encouraged to get tests twice a week um, and we have a quite a cool app system where you can you can sign up and get rewards for getting your tests um, and you can do it all on campus as well. Some quotes from some students, I know we're going to hear from some students later on, um, but I wanted to highlight some other students experiences, particularly about uh, the learning. Um, so here's a quote from um, one of our students, Zara, that she wrote in January uh, before we went back to fully online, um, talking about what, what blended learning kind of meant for her. Um, so you see, you know, it gives you that still gave her the option to study online um, and do seminars remotely so she could still uh, contribute to, to seminar discussions without having to physically come on campus um, if that just wasn't possible. And another example here from a student called Helen um, from January again before things went fully online um, and this is particularly about assessments so as I said um, in March and um, for this assessment period as well and um, there's been a lot of adjustments with exams because sitting in a traditional exam room um, you know again with maybe 200 students um, isn't the most COVID friendly activity um, and so uh, students uh, were their assessments may have been changed to something that was able to be done online they may have had things like open book exams so um, this student uh, had a particular essay she had to write um, using all of her notes um, and it didn't matter if she was in a different time zone uh, it gave her a little bit more time to process um, and um, overall may have been kind of a better option for her as uh, compared to a standard exam so as well as obviously uh, the academic side of things, uh, you might be kind of wondering about what university life looked like during a pandemic. Now, uh, our student ambassadors are the best people to really speak to that as they went through it themselves. Um, but just to highlight a few things that we've done at Royal Holloway. Um, so for this academic year, students were able to live at university in accommodation if they chose to, or they could study from home. And that includes international students. Um, obviously for international students, when they came over um, on their first flight in September time, um, they were mostly required to quarantine depending on where they'd come from and so students were able to quarantine in university accommodation for the required time um, before term started if that was the case for them. Students living in halls of residence are grouped into households um, so you the people that you live with become uh, your household for kind of restriction reasons uh, so obviously depending on where you live this may be more than six people we're used to a lot of things being in groups of six um, but you know if your household if you lived with you know 10 or 12 um, other students that's the size of your household and that's perfectly okay um, but students were expected to maintain socially distance social distance um, from students that they didn't live with and um, just to kind of highlight that um, we, it wasn't um, kind of taken very lightly uh, we did have to 
um, make sure that students were following the legal restrictions and um, following the, the college rules um, by kind of in, inputting uh, the penalty of fines or um, other disciplinary actions, um, which was attached to our kind of standard code of conduct um, that applies to all of our students. So um, for most, the majority of people that were following these restrictions and the few students that weren't, um, unfortunately they would have received something like a fine or a penalty. In terms of the support that students have received, obviously everyone's acknowledged that this has been a really, really difficult year and a bit um, for, for everybody. Um, universities across the country have offered things like being able to drop in on Zoom to ask for advice, um, trying to produce some socially distanced events um, when it was able to, to be produced. Um, our careers department would have put on events like virtual workshops and careers and placements fairs, so you could still think about your career options even though you weren't physically able to be on campus um, you were able to book a study space in the library if that was uh, kind of your thing if you felt like you needed to go and get out of your um, your household uh, which would have allowed you to you know obviously be socially distant from others um, they also would have been able to put on different webinars um, in terms of advice and um, they also allowed students to produce um, uh, group chats uh, for their accommodation which is something that happens every year anyway but just another way to, to kind of help you get to know people that you might be living with if, if you're going to be living on campus. Um, of course like I said everyone knows that it's going to be it's a really tough time so um, we the Royal Holloway Students Union who is kind of the centre of all um, social activity on campus put together a little mental health hub um, online and was able to direct students in the direction of the resources that they can access and the support that they can get. And you might be sort of thinking what happened to you know Freshers Week and, and social activities and stuff. Um, a lot of it did go online. You can see here this is from the um, uh, Give It A Go YouTube channel. They had sessions for lots of different societies. Um, so you could give it a go. You could hear about what the societies are you know, involved in, the types of stuff that they do. And some of them were even taster sessions as well. So um, you might have been able to you know, create a craft online. Um, you might have been able to do, I think there was some uh, Zumba or some salsa fitness as well, um, and those kinds of things to kind of get students involved, even though we can physically be in big groups. Um, and there were also socially distant um, in-person events like this one. We had an outdoor cinema um, in Founders Quad. Um, which to be honest that looks like quite a lot of fun I think they're watching Monsters University there um, so doing their very best to kind of um, keep those social activities alive um, while following restrictions and at the moment as we all know things are opening up a little bit more so um, this is a part of our SU area um, they have a really nice kind of outdoor garden space where you can get drinks um, and kind of socialize uh, with your friends in the in the kind of um, outdoor dining area I know that um, now we're allowed to go inside, but this was um, one of the only places that they had um, open for students to be able to go to when we were only allowed outside. Uh, another student's experience again, so this is um, in January, uh, so before kind of the, the next lockdown. Um, a student just talks about joining societies and having a look on, online at what was, what was there, doing some Zoom calls and some online movie nights. Um, and managing to meet up with some friends um, in other household socially distance during lockdown. Okay, so um, hopefully I've just covered some kind of real basic questions for you there about what university life did look like during the pandemic. Um, I'm going to hand over now to our student ambassadors. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to ask them, I think that um, of the three of them, only Jasmine has her webcam, um, but that is totally fine because we should still be able to hear from Annie and Natalia. So great, I can see Jasmine. Um, I'm just going to have to physically unmute you. Just bear with me a second. Mm Hello, can you hear me? Fantastic, we can hear you okay, Jasmine. Um, so while I get my webcam up and um, unmute the rest of our student ambassadors, why don't you um, introduce yourself, Jasmine, and, and um, tell us 
what it is that you do and what it is that you study and uh, kind of what your situation was like uh, over the last year. Okay, so hi everyone, um, I'm Jazz, um, Jasmine. Um, so I study film, TV and digital production here, um, which was impacted quite a lot by the pandemic because it is a 50% practical course. So as you can imagine, it was a bit different um, because a lot of it was moved online. Um, a lot of the group work, we had to, to do that online as well. Um, so that, that was um, quite a large impact. Um, and yeah, like you say, a big mental impact as well, but hopefully we'll delve into that a bit more with the questions. So thank you very much. Great. Hi, I'm Natalia, and I study psychology here. And again, like most of it was online, but first term I did have a few like normal lectures in like a lecture theatre, but it was split into two groups so that we had like lectures A and lectures B. So different timings, so we had smaller groups, but in general I've been mostly in accommodation here so the experience was quite nice because I could spend time with the people in my household which was nice but yeah. Fantastic and Annie? Hi I'm really sorry my camera isn't working I've no okay. idea why. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi I'm Annie I'm a second year English student here um, I actually spent my time during um, lockdown both at home and at uni so I kind of have experiences both um, being surrounded by students and being in the campus and like using the library facilities and also being at home like a lot of us were over the pandemic. Um, my course was it was impacted, um, not hugely though. Um, obviously our lectures were um, put online and we had obviously a blended learning experience at the beginning, um, but at the moment or before um, when lectures were still going on, we had, um, everything was online. Um, but I think at the beginning of next year, we're going back to blended learning, which is quite good. Um, I'm really excited about that, but yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so um, we've got our first question in the chat. We've got some pre-submitted ones as well, but um, since, we, since we've got some in the chat, let's start with those. Um, so the first one is, how do online lectures compare with face-to-face -face lectures? Um, so Annie, maybe let's start with you and then we'll go backwards. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, online lectures and in-person lectures are quite a different experience, obviously. When you're in an in-person lecture you kind of have to go to it and you have to drag yourself out of bed first thing in the morning which can be a bit of a pain but at the same time you are forced to concentrate and you are motivated because you've got yourself there um online it's a bit trickier obviously um i don't know if you guys have been like learning through um online stuff before but obviously it's a bit trickier because you lose a lot of focus and you're not as motivated because you're I don't know like in your bedroom and it's quite easy to just go downstairs and get a little snack if you're hungry or go and make a cup of tea or something um it's it's a lot more difficult to concentrate online um but obviously lecturers do their best to kind of take that into account and make their lectures as interesting and as motivating as possible so where there is a big difference um they still kind of cater to all of the students' individual needs and really, really, they aren't as bad as people make them sound. How about you, Natalia? Do you find the same thing? Um, yeah, I actually, I found it literally exactly as Annie said, um, but I did find that as well, like it was quite useful because, having it online because I could, whenever I needed to revisit the lectures, I could, because all of them were recorded, you could easily go back have a look again and like you would just sign in online when your lecture was um, taking place at the time and you just have it like I, I would you know just kind of have it in bed and do notes on in my bed it was quite comfy not gonna lie but then at the same time as Annie did say I was definitely not as motivated as when I went into lectures and sat down and actually you know you could participate more because I felt like in um, like online lectures obviously lecturers tried their best and tried to ask questions for students but a lot of students didn't feel like asking questions it would be better to be in person for that so I did kind of miss having lectures in person even the 9 a.m's which were quite hard to get to but um, when in first term we could still do some like lectures in person I took every opportunity I could to be there because I just felt it is very motivating so I hope everything get, gets back to normal so that you guys can experience 
the normal lectures and you know the normal uni experience but both online is good as well so yeah I think that's a really good point about being them being recorded and being able to go back to them in your own time because that wasn't something that was with um, every single in in person lecture um some were recorded but not all of them and not for every course so at least now it, it you know you you're always going to have a copy of that lecture for when you're revising or writing your assignment or anything like that it's a good point i didn't think about that how about you jasmine um, so my course is a bit different um, because with film, when you have a lecture, you also have a screening alongside it. Um, but because everything was moved online, all of the screenings we went to do in our own time. And I think students found that that put a bit more pressure on them because there was a lot more independent expectations um, for people. Um, but it, on the other side of it, you did get to watch it in your own time, make notes, you could pause it, that kind of thing. So there is, there is two sides of it. Um, I think um, like everyone else has said it's quite difficult to focus when it's online i guess because people process information in different ways so if you're in person it can be a bit more engaging um personally i did really enjoy online lectures as well um they had their advantages like you could pause them when you were re-watching them um and there wasn't any sort of interruptions because the teacher could just speak um and yeah there, there was that but also I felt like there was a loss of community because I feel like a big part of going to lectures is seeing people on your course and maybe grabbing a snack like at the break or or getting to talk to them afterwards um so I feel like that sense of community was lost um but the, like you say the university put on loads of other virtual events to sort of promote that sense of community so it was a balance of good and bad but overall it wasn't as terrible as everyone seems to think <laughs> I guess it's hard because you lose those more natural kind of uh, moments where you just be chatting to someone right before the lecture. You know, if everyone's just logging on in their own homes and want to get it, want to watch it and then straight away log off, then it, it's a little bit harder to have that kind of interaction. But yeah, it's definitely a, a learning process, isn't it? OK, cool. Um, so I'm going to go to some pre-submitted questions now. Um, so I guess kind of similar. We've talked about lectures, so online learning really. Um, but how did you find it blended? I know that some of you mentioned some of the time you were doing blended, of course, with all the restrictions changing, and some of you were um, only got to do it a little bit, um, and, and some of you were going back to it and that kind of stuff. So, what did you think about the um, if you did have a chance to do somewhere there was some face to face and some online? Um, how did you find it? Shall we start with Nat Natalia? Um, yeah, so I actually enjoyed it because it made it kind of like it was different. So it was a bit more interesting to obviously not constantly sit in my room and have to, you know, it made even like a day a bit different than the rest because obviously during the pandemic, the it was quite difficult to have a different experience. So it was it was quite nice to actually go into uni and even just the, you know, just going into uni to even after the lecture, just sit on like the grass in front of founders which you probably saw the lovely building um but it was just nice to kind of grab a coffee after and like go into uni but it was also nice to have that balance because then it meant like you wouldn't get you had you wouldn't get as tired i guess because constantly some like in first year i would have like quite a lot of 9 a.m so you got like drained sometimes so this was like a nice balance of you know having a change in the environment a bit as well but no i did personally really enjoy it when i could have the you know blended learning so uh, yeah cool uh annie how about you yeah similar to natalia i really enjoyed it as well um i would have preferred to have it all um in person because i just work better when I'm like in a place where everyone's kind of learning rather than sat in my bedroom. Um, but yeah, no, it was actually, as as Natalia said, like the whole process of coming onto campus and I know getting dressed in the morning, packing your bag and actually attending a um, face to face seminar. It kind of I don't know, it makes you feel productive and it makes you feel like you're actually learning. Whereas when you're attending something just online after you've finished it, despite the fact you might have made shed loads of notes and you might have actually understood what they were saying, you don't feel as productive. Um, so, I mean, I would have preferred it all to be in person, but obviously <laughs> you can't really do that when there are like 150 people um, on your course. Um, but yeah, no, the blended experience was a really good um, method that they used to kind of make sure that 
whilst people were staying safe, they were still um, face to face things going on. So, yeah, I really, really liked it as well. Yeah, and it sounds like it gave you a quite lot of variety when things, other things were definitely not very varied. You didn't have much else to do. So at least you could go in um, for a, a bit of face to face teaching every now and then. What about you, Jasmine? Was your experience quite similar? Did you get to do any um, face to face? Um, I did actually really enjoy it for the time that we had. Um, similar to the others, I did sort of go in whenever I had the opportunity to. Um, but I think something important to remember is I really appreciate how the uni did their best in the situation um, regarding everything. But at the time when we went to blending, blended teaching originally in September, um, the pandemic was still quite rampant, like the numbers were going down, but it was still very much there. And I think there was a lot of anxiety about things almost going back to normal, which sounds strange, but that is what it was. So I feel, although I did enjoy getting to see people and returning to that sense of normality, there was also a lot of anxiety around it because you're sat in a classroom and you don't know who these people in your class have interacted with. You don't know whether they've, they're have carrying something, do you know what I mean? So there was the other side of it too. Um, but I feel like now that we are returning more to blended teaching again, um, now that more people have been vaccinated, now that cases are down even more, um, I think it's going to be a lot more successful than it was before. But I think the university did a very good job. Yeah, I think that's totally a really good point is that not everybody, um, you know, would feel super comfortable in being in a classroom um, when they, especially if they've been, you know, um, locked down the whole summer and not really we're not really seeing people and it was a bit of a change to kind of say okay now you're expected to be here um but yeah you're right hopefully um if if things keep uh, if things go positively in terms of the, the country situation then um if blended learning is what happens if, if we do return to blended learning in autumn it'll be a little bit less uh, worrying i think for students if, if they know that at least the case numbers are down and lots of uh, people have been vaccinated Sorry, can I just add something as well? Mm -hmm. um, I really liked how even if you were feeling anxious, you had the choice. Like people could yeah. choose to be there in person, but they could also choose to go online, which is what I did end up doing towards the end of the blended learning period. Just wanted to add that. Yeah, no, fantastic. I, I think that's really important um, to know like that it wasn't a forced um, you weren't forced to, to go out, especially, you know, if someone was shielding or if someone, um, like we said, if they'd been asked to self-isolate, the last thing you'd want is to have to miss like two weeks of, of teaching uh, because you got a notification on, on your app or something like that. Um, so, yeah, that's good. Definitely a good point. Um, so we've had a question in the chat that kind of also relates to one that was pre-submitted. So I'm going to um, kind of split them into two parts. So um, it's how were you uh, assisted or supported by the university? Um, during the pandemic. Now, the first question is uh, is about during online learning, so academically, and then uh, the other question is kind of more more generally, just how were you just supported um, in terms of other other non academic um, things. Um, so let's go to Jasmine first. Hi. Um, so I think it was different between all departments. I think it was quite um, they were very similar, but there were differences. So in the media arts department they did give us two week extensions on all of our um, sub like all of our submissions, um, which was really helpful. And I don't think that I could have done that without those extensions. So it's good that they acknowledged that we're being expected to be a bit more independent and and take on the mental challenges of living in a pandemic at the same time. So I really appreciated that. Um, and in terms of emotional support, um, it was there. We did get like emails from lecturers um, and I feel like we were updated, um, but I feel like everyone still struggled. I think it's very difficult to sort of solve things with an email, um, but I think students went out of their way to organise things by themselves. So it wasn't necessarily through the university, but just keeping in touch with friends, organising things on your own time. That's what really helped um, emotionally support. But academically, I feel like we were supported well by our lecturers who were also very good at responding to their emails so always a bonus yeah that's important um how about you natalia so kind of similar as well like we got um our department because i do psychology so they did give extensions a lot more ease easily than they would usually because usually you'd have to have quite a good reason to you know have that one week extension because for psychology we could only 
well you could have a week if it was like if it was something related but wasn't like a medical issue or longer I'm not sure the longer one but so here like because I knew how much like people were like struggling because of like the pandemic and stuff so it was easily given to you which I found personally was very useful because it just in general the pandemic has caused me to not be as motivated as I usually was so even talking to my tutor was very like helpful because I'm a third year student so I had like dissertation and all of that lot which has been quite a lot of pressure and kind of as well talking about like tutors like they were always there to talk to so our department tried to make it as normal as they possibly could with like dropping sessions like they usually had in person they would do online which was quite nice because it felt like people could just ask questions over the chat and like just in general we all had like a per like a personal tutor to catch up every in once a term to like be like oh well, how are you doing like what are your plans especially for like third years for them to like know what they're doing after uni which has been also quite stressful but uh, that is something that the tutors like helped with a lot so the department did try to make it as normal as possible the same with psychology like they usually did like pantos every year the whole psychology department so they would do that in person do like a whole show and stuff which was amazing and this time they did it online so they really did try to make it as normal as possible for students to not miss out on those opportunities which was lovely and yeah I just felt like whenever I needed to even mental health wise like you would just get constant emails reminding you who to contact and it was very helpful so I did whenever I did struggle there was always someone to talk to which was nice but yeah cool and how about you Annie I've kind of been thinking like what can I add to this because the two yeah. girls <laughs> pretty much said it already but um, yeah, it's okay I was, don't have anything different. um in terms of like international students um I myself I'm not an international student but I know um I have friends sorry ignore that that's my <laughs> telephone um yeah I have friends who have um come from different countries to learn here and um they have obviously had contracts that haven't catered for them so where they've been stuck in the UK it's been a bit of a panic because they're like what, where do I how do I where do I live like I haven't got anywhere to live um and there are special places on our campus that have basically catered for these international students who can't go back home um and it I just think that was like a really really I mean like a really useful thing like the other without it they probably would have had nowhere to go um so these special places for international students um I think is a really really beneficial thing um, another thing I think um, to support people through the pandemic was um, sports clubs. Um, so last year I was part of um, the cheerleading society or cheerleading sports club and um, they had like weekly quizzes and weekly little Zoom meetings, um, which I have to say I didn't really attend weekly, but um, they had like little games nights and just like cocktail making evenings, stuff like that, which although it may have seemed like a bit of a drag to go to, you actually came off feeling like really, really happy because obviously you can't see anyone during the pandemic, you can't meet up with your friends and sports clubs, which you were really excited to attend, were obviously put on hold. So to even just like spend the evening with them on Zoom was just like really nice. So I suppose in that way, it all differs from sports club, but sports clubs were really, really also um, useful, like supporting students as well. I think I feel like you guys have covered all the, all the different um, kind of um, aspects, all the ways that the areas that you can get support from. Um, I have a sort of specific question, um, maybe for Natalia, maybe for Annie, because I think Jasmine, you're not in university accommodation at the moment, or were you? No, I'm but, in, um, yeah, off campus. Yeah. Um, so what was the situation with, um, as far as I know, definitely the first, the first round, the first lockdown, um, students were all able to get refunds on their accommodation contracts and, you know, they were able to kind of move out um, and go back home if that's what they wanted to do. They weren't sort of like locked in to, to their contracts as, as they would have been in a normal year. Um, do you guys know, has that been similar this year? Are students able to kind of um, change or, or decide if they want to stay in accommodation or not when all the lockdowns have happened? Uh, maybe Natalia do you know? Um, so basically I'm in private accommodation which is hot part. so here like it's still like help like uni do communicate with them but I know 
on campus uni accommodation was a lot better with that. Um, I know here international students, if they went back home, now they checked as to who like came back, who didn't, and the ones that didn't come back, they like got refunds and stuff. So that was quite useful. But unfortunately for those like, even though because Hops Park here has like a gym facility and like little pool table, whatever. So that was an unfortunately like no one got a refund for even the people that stayed here no one got a refund for kind of not being able to use those facilities. They're open now, but for a long time they weren't, which was quite, but that is still under, it might change, which I don't want to, you know, but so that was the situation there. But I, I think Annie might have better insight in, as to like the university comedy, because that yeah. is, I know they did a lot better. So yeah, I mean, it, it's good to get your perspective on like a, a different type of hall that's so it's run by a private company but it's still really close to Holloway campus yeah exactly. I know about um last year I was in halls I'm a second year now so I'm in um housing off campus but I lived in halls last year and obviously I left mid-march um for the beginning of lockdown I only really know about that in that we were refunded for all um all of term three um and we didn't have to pay anything for um term three accommodation which was really good um i'm not too sure about it now i think if you do want to con um terminate your contract you can i think it's quite easy to like whereas before it wasn't very easy to once you signed that contract you were you were in a contract but i think now where everything is a bit up in the air and people are changing their minds with like everything changing so quickly i think they're quite lenient with if you can terminate your contract um so yeah i think it I'm not too sure, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that is the case for um, this year's people in halls. Yeah, I believe um, that it that was the case that you were able to kind of um, change your mind, especially when we went into lockdown three, I want to say, in um, January or November time. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it like you said, hopefully that's, there's increased flexibility for that. Um, but I actually, from, from speaking to lots of students, students did choose to stay on campus. Um, and that, that it's not like it, campus was completely abandoned um, because, um, you know, for, for a lot of students, they were still, you know, yes, they were studying from their rooms, but they were still able to keep that kind of community and, and still able to live um, in their household with their flatmates and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, obviously it's, it's your choice, but just kind of wanted to reassure um, any prospective students in terms of accommodation that, if there is, if we do go into another lockdown, or if there are restrictions um, in the coming academic year, um, then you, you'll usually be able to kind of uh, leave your accommodation contract and, and go back home if that's what you choose and without being penalised in terms of extra fees and stuff like that. Actually, if, sorry, I wanted to add, because I know my friend, she lives in accommodation now, and they were able to um, come back later during the December time, so got mm -hmm. money back for the term that wasn't, in person at all and came back now so that was also an option to just not come back as early as you, you usually would but just stay home for an extra month and you'd get money for that so i know that also happened which was she found was quite useful so it's also something to consider yeah i think they've just been trying to be as flexible as possible to make sure that students get the choice of, of what they want to do and knowing that they can still come and stay in halls even if they're not um, going to be in person um, but obviously now that in-person teaching is currently allowed um, before we go I've just had a question um, that is uh, specifically for Natalia um, so if asking about your dissertation research are you working your dissertation at the moment um, I've actually submitted mine already thank god <laughs> <laughs> so they yeah. asked um, has, how, how has the pandemic changed um, your dissertation has it changed your topic and um, do you have any words of wisdom for um, other psychology students? Oh, so um, my project was on procrastination, which is uh, funny enough, I am a big procrastinator. So that's what kind of I researched about. But in general, I feel like it did change quite a lot because obviously we didn't, we weren't able to have the like participants in person. So everything, because I, I was working with a group as well to fi find out different um work on a questionnaire and stuff so everything had to be done online which again is there's positives and there's negatives there's you know like luckily 
I was able to get around like 300 participants, which was amazing. But obviously, if I had the option to have it in person, there's like a here at this university, we have like an MRI scanner. So people just would previously decide to do like brain scans on students and all of that lot. So you could really go into a lot of, you know, detail and it was just more exciting to do because I know I participated in some like third year dissertations and studies, which was fun, but unfortunately we couldn't do that. So it did definitely, people had to adapt as to what they could stud, like study as well and what they wanted to write about because it was now mostly looking at research that was previously done rather than your research. So that was quite, it was a shame, but I think as well, it just depends now how, you know, it was, it, we all had, I had my personal tutor to help me with it as well. And he was a lot of help because we would have Zoom calls whenever I needed it. So that wasn't much change because I would, I would usually see him in a person. So in like over Zoom, it wasn't too bad. But obviously it would be nice to have that experience of conducting your own study. But at least, you know, we're going to see how it goes. And it was, it. most people did like talking about like other degrees as well with dissertations because my friends did like music and stuff, which is obviously quite a practical one. Um, but they found it okay. It just, you know, you just needed to adapt a little bit and it wasn't too bad. It just, you needed to take into account that you did have to have everything online which but it wasn't too bad I still enjoyed it so you know it was fine <laughs> a great topic to be doing it on um in these times I think a lot of people are um, suffering from a bit of procrastination <laughs> um okay I know I've said last question like about three times um but we do probably have time for like a quick just a quick answer on this last one um so can you do you want to tell us obviously Students that might be listening to this now might be thinking about coming to Royal Holloway in, in the autumn. Um, in all likelihood, we will probably still be facing a pandemic at that point. Um, whether whether restrictions are you know uh, gone or whether um, there is still a new form of learning. So can you just give us your kind of number one piece of advice for students that are going to be um, studying during a pandemic? Um, maybe Annie, I'll start with you. Yeah. Um... My one piece of advice um, for general university, I can just think of like a piece of advice, which is to kind of like throw yourself into everything that you can. Like, um, obviously, when you do come, hopefully things will be different and there'll be um, things available. You can go to clubs, societies and um, go to your actual lectures in person. And when that is um, a thing, I'm hoping hoping that will be a thing for when you guys can come. Um, just kind of like throw yourself in there and just really do things that are out of your comfort zone and things that you might not think to do because you might not even realize it but something that you've never done before actually might be one of your like greatest passions or something like that or like a subject which you never even thought you were interested in actually might be something that you could write about in your third year dissertation um obviously at the moment things are a bit different um so it's less easy to kind of throw yourself in because you can't really do it as much. But even in like Freshers' Week, I know that um, our uni had a lot of online events, which doesn't sound as fun as in-person <laughs> events because everything was online. But just kind of if you do have the same sort of situation as our previous um, first years, just still try and like throw yourself in there as much as possible, even if it isn't as fun as you might have thought. Just keep going at it because like there are different opportunities out there and I'm sure that whatever you throw yourself into will have lots of opportunities. Cool. Jasmine? Um, I think I would say don't be afraid to take initiative. I think the pandemic has made it harder for opportunities to be more visible um, and I think by putting yourself out there by even in group projects taking the sort of leader position that's really going to help get you noticed, it's really going to help um, you feel more confident it's just going to help in general and it moves things along especially in a time when things are a lot more difficult and I'd say also to be patient with other people as well because at this point we don't know what other people are going through you just see them on a screen for an hour a day um, so with teachers and with your your peers I would say just be empathetic um, and understand at the same time very good advice there that also sort of follows along from Annie's and then adds, adds another extra bit and, and then finally Natalia and I would say like just try 
going outside if like there is I hope, I'm hoping there won't be another lockdown but if there is just you know don't sit indoors and drive yourself insane just try going outside even for a walk and Royal Holloway has amazing places to just sit outdoors for a bit and just enjoy like even time on your own you know like sometimes that is really much needed and you'll go insane if you stay indoors all the time so I think just going walking there's amazing places around here and as well like just with like education wise because I feel like that's you know that's the main thing but like just try to stay on top of things because I know like I'm a third year now and I know myself and that's what also why I did my project of procrastination because I am the worst and I know like now looking back those three years I know if even if I spent an hour a day just like just looking at notes or even looking back at lectures it would just save me so much stress and you'll realize that you know like it will just be so much easier for you in the future and I know like it's easier said than done I say it every year I'm like yeah I'll stay, stay on top of lectures and do notes but that is just you know just to stay on top of things and not be as stressed when deadlines and exams come come around so yeah that's from me fantastic okay brilliant so i think we've answered all the questions in the chat and all of the pre-submitted ones um so all that's left from me is to say a huge thank you to my student ambassadors thank you very much guys for coming it's been really useful to hear your experiences and i'm sure that um all of our students have felt the same um i'm just posting a link now in the chat um for a email address if you would like the recording of today's session then please just email us and we'll get it sent over to you um, otherwise, um, you'll feel, feel free to leave. When you close the webinar session, there will be a feedback form. Please just take a couple minutes to fill that out. It's really useful for us to know um, if we've helped at all today. Um, otherwise, have a lovely evening, everybody, um, and take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.